Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at a couple different extensions to make a couple different of sunshades. We're using sunshades as an example of how to use these tools, but basically the thing we want to do is make a tensile structure. So uh, a fabric piece that is held taut, fairly taut between multiple points, it has some sort of a sag or give to it, that kind of thing, like you'd see in a sun shale or a banner or, or something like that. So we're going to make a couple of these. We're going to use three different sets, no, four different sets of extensions. And uh, these were all thought of and, and asked for at various points by you guys. So let's take a look at what they are. All right, so I have, I'm set up here to make some simple, like I said, just some sunshades, some sun sails, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to use a couple different tools. So the first one I'm going to use is sandbox tools. So this is the, the standard. It is an extension. It is a standard extension. This is an extension that is shipped with SketchUp. Um, we'll take a look at that. The next one is going to be uh, Soap, Skin, and Bubble. This is an older extension. Uh, in fact, I, I think that it's been a while since it's been updated on the 3 Warehouse. And some people have even said this doesn't work with the new versions, but it does. It works quite well. Uh, it's just not on the website. It doesn't list newer versions, uh, but the, the thing itself works quite well. Um, and then we're going to look at Curvaloft which is a great extension from the one and only Fredo. And we're going to double up on that because I've had a couple people ask about Topo Shaper. Topo Shaper is actually a tool that is geared at creating topography primarily off of topographical lines, but it can create geometry that connects together uh, geometry as well. It's geometry that connects, ge well, I mean, surfaces that connect line segments or something like that. You'll see what it does. Um, so I wanted to give that a shot too. So we're going to try these, these four different tools and we're going to see which one is the right one to use for this workflow. All right, so we're going to start with stock. We're going to start with the standard uh, that comes with SketchUp. We're going to look at sandbox tools. So to do any of these, we need geometry. And many of these will work right off of these lines. So all I did here, I created this a couple of support structures and then I had a couple line segments shoot up above it. And uh, for these three, which is going to be these, these three extensions over here, I have just an arc looping down a little bit. Um, that's because these three, Soap, Skin, and Bubble, Curvaloft, and Topo Shaper, are going to work off of these lines to create a swooping geometry. Uh, the first one that we're going to use, though, Sandbox Tool is a little bit different because it's going to ask for a flat geometry to start with and then put a swoop onto it from that geometry. So let's do that. Let's look at this. So I have these four lines. I put them in the straight lines for Sandbox Tools because what we're going to do is we're going to create a new grid. I click here and I click here and I click up to here and it's going to create a grid like that. Now, uh, it will always create a rectangular grid. So this is the first thing that's that's, uh, if I was grading, this would be a strike against it, is that I'm going to have to come in here and cut this out so that I have just the triangle. And to do that, I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to explode this, and then uh, just come in and just real quickly erase out the geometry that laps over the edges. So this is, you know, pretty simple uh, process. It does feel a little janky. There's some things I could do to maybe, oops, Make it a little bit quicker, but really, it's not too, ooh, look at that, that one was really close. Uh, it's not too difficult to just grab that stuff and then, uh, you know, grid that and then grab all of this like that. And then we just got to do it on the other side too. And no, before anybody asks, I don't know that components would make this any quicker because anytime I repeat anything, somebody's going to say, if you did components, you could have done it half as many times. But I, I have a feeling that setting up two halves of this would have been uh, just as much, if not more work. So anyhow, okay, there we go. So we got that. It's gone. Um, the way that this is going to work, I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to make it into a group. And then we're going to go into that group. And we're going to use this smooth button. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a 
a shape that we can push down on. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to grab the center. I'm going to push it down and you can see how that just starts to drop and we have our little sunshade. Works pretty good, works pretty simple. The thing that's gonna happen with this in particular is it's not going to hold onto the ends perfectly. See, see how uh, my support where it started got pushed down a little bit. Um, see how this one kinda curved a little less at the top and still got pushed down. So I'm at a little bit of a different space. If I was just doing something quick and dirty and didn't wanna download an extension, that would work. But not the idea, and that's not what the tool is necessarily designed for, but uh, you can get something, but maybe not exactly what you want with that. All right, let's move along. Soap, skin, and bubble. The first thing I'm going to do is select the three edges. So I'm using my three swooping lines this time, and I'm going to hit skin. What that's going to do is going to create a shape that is connected to this exact, uh, the, my exact edges. Uh, it's going to ask me for divisions. I'm going to say, let's, let's double that. Let's go to 20 and hit enter. All right, that looks good. Uh, when I click... It is going to, uh, or I'm sorry, I hit enter. It's going to connect that up. And you can see already I'm getting a better solution than what I had with Sandbox Tools. That's great. You can see it's kind of bubbling up a little bit, right? See how that's kind of, but this might be actually how my tension works on this. I don't, I'm not really an expert in tensile structures. But what I can do is I can come in here and I can set uh, a pressure. So I can say something like, I want to see a pressure, a positive pressure of 20 and hit enter and see how that pushed down a little bit more. Let's, let's, let's go bigger. Let's go like a hundred and hit enter. Okay. There I can see, see how that's pushing way down. That's pretty cool. And I can do this opposite too. So I can put minus 100, hit enter, and it'll be as if it's blowing up from below. So I think with this, something like a 20, that looks pretty good. Maybe 30 just to see a little bit more, push down a little bit more, but there you go. So that's a great way to get uh, a tensile structure in there. Uh, soap, skin, and bubble, a free extension. And it, despite what it says on, on Extension Warehouse, it does work perfectly well with the newest versions of SketchUp. All right, let's move along. Let's go to Curveloft. Curveloft is one of my favorite extensions for modeling organic-y, flowy type geometry um, because it's just so quick and easy. So I have a couple buttons here. I'm gonna hit the bottom one and it's gonna skin those three edges. It's gonna automatically create this nice ordered grid. And I'm just gonna hit the check mark. There is options in here. We're not gonna go deep into this. We're just kind of using the default values on all of them. You can see that's what it gives me. So the the dip, the the drop downness, drop downedness is all based on the arcs I have in here. If I want to swoop down more, I would put a bigger arc in here. Uh, but you can see how that looks. I'm gonna turn on my hidden geometry real quick and you can see the grid that it gave me so if I look at the grids thus far over here I have this nice ordered grid until it comes to the edges then I have all these choppy lines jumping around and cutting everything up um, over here a nice ordered grid but very similar uh, soap skin and bubble did a very similar job of the, at the ends of chopping that up um, the big difference being that my grid is right against the edge here versus this one. For some reason, it's pushed in a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what the reason does it. Over here, we do have a perfectly aligned grid. So it actually changed the direction of the grid. So it would flow with the shape of the geometry. So that's pretty nice. Um, all right, I'm going to turn that off just because there's there's too many lines for my eyes. I can't see that. And let's, let's try one last one. So I did have, this was because of a request, can you use Topo Shaper for something like this? Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna grab my three lines. I am going to uh, hit the button. Oops, wrong button. Topo Shaper. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. Calculate my terrain. Now, Topo Shaper is made to make terrain. This is what it does. It goes through and it says, all right, based on these, this is how the, the, the ground would come together and it creates this nice, beautiful ordered grid, but you can see right off the bat, it's doing some stuff that's kind of not ideal. And this is not, I'm just gonna go ahead and generate this. This is not Topo Shaper's fault. We are using it in a weird way. Uh, so what we end up with is, we're gonna have a couple different groups here. The bottom that's making it a solid, I'm just gonna delete that. We can look right at this. So. Not perfect, but again, not what it was made for. So I did want to honor the fact that 
several people asked about topo shaper in this use, but uh, probably not what you'd want to actually do there. It does create this beautiful, beautiful flowing grid, but again, not the ideal workflow. This is not what topo shaper is made to do. And uh, it's, it's kind of evident here. So if I was to come in and make a tensile structure or a bunch of tensile structures, I would go towards one of these two, soap skin and bubble or curve aloft. Um, for its simplicity, I like curve aloft. The reason I may turn to soap skin and bubble is if I want to have more control on how this bulges down or pops up or anything like that. Um, if I was modeling tensile structures under different loads or something like that, and I needed to show this one bulge down more because there's snow on it or something like that, then I'd probably lean towards soap, skin, and bubble, but it is hard to beat this nice ordered mesh and the smoothness that's created by Curve Aloft. So uh, yeah, so there we go. We got three different looks at three different ways to make tensile structures. And I would have to say that uh, my personal opinion, Curve Aloft is gonna give you the best solution. So I know we, we compared some apples and oranges there. Um, Sandbox Tools wasn't made to do tensile structures, but you can see how you can use it a little bit. You lose some of the essential pieces like uh, those, the, the points where it was supporting, we can kind of see right, right there. Uh, those, those points get pushed around because it's not, again, not how it's supposed to be used. So it'll work if you're just getting some weird geometry, but really that soap skin and bubble and curve loft are the ones. And I, I apologize, I made Topo Shaper not look awesome. Topo Shaper is an amazing tool for what it does. This is not what it's supposed to do. So this is kind of an, can we turn this sideways and make it do the thing we want it to do? Um, yeah, but probably not as good as a tool that's actually intended to do that. So uh, yeah, check those out. If you, if you haven't already, um, I'll put links to all of them. Uh, sandbox tools and soap skin and bubble are available on extension warehouse uh, curve aloft and topo shaper available through sketchycation plugin store check them out they are all all four of them have their place and they're all great extensions but uh, those are all worth checking out they're all good tools um, so if you you do use them let, let us know about that if you like that content, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Are there some other use cases you would like to see extensions face off in? Or are there other extensions specifically that you'd like more detail on? Maybe, maybe some of these. Maybe we want to go deeper with some of these and how they work. Um, let us know about that extension. Or let us know about that those extensions in the comments. That's what I was shooting for. Uh, or, I mean, any other ideas you guys have for videos. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.